Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. So I'm going to be doing the upcoming games list this week and let's be honest there's been some shocking weeks and I've got it this week and it is a blooming good week I've got to say. We've got Trials of Mana coming, Streets of Rage 4. Sorry Glenn, looks like I got the long straw. Right, let's jump into the video. First up then, we have the really interesting looking Help Will Come, which is about a group of survivors who survive a train wreck in the Siberian wilderness on the eve of the October Revolution. The whole game is tied together with a strong narrative. There are nine different characters, each with their own origin stories, abilities, needs and wants, and you'll gradually uncover 10 different intimate stories. You can build different facilities and upgrade your camp, send your group out on expeditions to try and find help or food, and there are tons of choices to make via dialogue options. The weather conditions and other elements will change and you'll have to adapt to survive. I like the idea of this one, it's perhaps a touch on the expensive side though. It's launching at $17.99, which I know, look, they put a lot of time into their games, but really on the Switch, the amount there is on it, you're looking for around about a £10 price release on this type of game. Still, that being said, it does look interesting and it might be worth looking out for when it drops on the 21st. Next up then we've got a game called Ita, which is a bullet hell boss rush style adventure game where you play as a young girl who's got her dad's pistol and a ghost cat. If that's not one of the most awesome premises I've ever heard, I don't know what is. Look, I'm going to call it right away. This one's tingling my good game sensors. This looks like a cross between a bullet hell shooter and enter the gungeon in the best possible way. It looks very slick and quick, but it's also got a touch of hyper light drifter in the visuals. If it gets even close to any of those mentions, then this is going to be a great game. This one drops on the 22nd, but judging by the visuals, the music and well, the look of the gameplay, it looks to have that special formula to it. Now it is only a single player experience, it comes in a really small little download, but for my money, Armour Games are onto a bit of a winner here. Then there's Sunless Sea, the Submarina edition from Digirati. This one's out on the 23rd, and you'll be taking control of the steamship, as it's known, set in a Victorian Gothic role-playing setting. It looks to perhaps, I mean, I could be wrong here, but it looks to perhaps potentially have something similar to Rogue Legacy, whereby you'll die and take on a new generation. You can upgrade the ship with new engines, cannons, pneumatic torpedoes and other bits and bobs. But there's also a hiring aspect here as well where you'll be employing different officers, each of whom has their own story for you to uncover. There's lots of different loots and treasure to find and there's trading here as well. So my goodness, imagine if this had a bit of Sid Meier's to it. That would be amazing. This is one that I'm really hoping to cover. Now we've got some big reviews coming up next week um, but I'd love to get something else out for this one. It really uh, tickles me fancy. This drops on the 23rd. Next up then we've got MotoGP 20 from Milestone. Now it's a long running series, it's been a little bit overpriced on Switch in the past and the performance wasn't amazing but they're still good games that have a real following to them. The thing here is there's a couple of alarm bells ringing for me. There's no trailer on the eShop, that price at £40 is still quite expensive and there's also not a huge amount of information on what's changed this time round. Obviously you'll have all the usual bike customization, different tracks and races, and they do say that they've improved and changed the engine, and I believe there's a management aspect here as well. There is two to eight player local wireless, but there's no mention of online, which is, again, a bit of an alarm bell. And there's no multiplayer couch play by the looks of it, which, again, alarm bell. Another one that's worth looking at for me is Broken Lines, which is a story-driven, turn-based tactical RPG. Think something like XCOM, but set in a World War II era. It's set around a group of eight different soldiers who crash land behind enemy lines and then have to make their way back. Now, it describes itself as being similar to a classic turn-based tactical RPG, but your soldiers only move when act the action phase starts. And when new enemies appear, then the action's then paused, which is actually classic XCOM, isn't it? You used to get the little exclamation 
exclamation mark come up in the corner of the screen. Man, good times. Now, unlike a lot of those games, there are choices here to be made as you progress through the story, which will then supposedly change the ending. So it looks like there's other endings that you can get to. And this is purely a single player only game. Now it's launching at £22.49 and it has an 18 rating. It's single player only as I say, and you're looking at about a four gig download. This one drops on the 23rd. Next up then, you've got the now very, very well-known Streets of Rage 4 from Dot Emu and Lizard Cube. These are the guys that did the Wonder Boy The Dragon's Trap remake on the Switch to lots of praise just because they did such a fantastic job, not only with the new visuals, but with the old visuals. This again looks very similar in terms of art style, but what I have to say is they have got a retro mode, which includes the retro visual and the retro sound. Man, I've said visual a lot, haven't I? It's like a drinking game, except I don't have anything. This is sad. It's produced or published, I should say, from Dot Emu. It's launching at a reasonable £22.49, the feature that we've got here that hasn't ever been in the series before is four-player local co-op, which, oh my goodness, if I can get my family onto this one. I mean, does this... No, this isn't a kid's game, is it? <laughs> Shh, no one will know. Anyway, a very good, fun title by the looks of it, and the fact that they've added online multiplayer as well, especially in these ridiculous times, is a nice feature to have. This drops on the 23rd. Then there's Trials of Mana from Square. Now we had a demo of this, didn't we, last month, and we got to go to the London office and preview it, and we enjoyed it a lot, but my main takeaway so far has been that it's too easy. I have the full game on my Switch right now, which is unbelievably awesome, and I will be giving you a full review next week, and let's hope that they've done something to improve that difficulty. Either way, this is probably my pick for next week, but if you are thinking of picking it up early, they do still have the early purchase bonus, which is that you receive the Rabbite Adornment DLC which gains you more XP after battles up to level 10. Hmm, I'm so sure how I feel about that, to be honest. And it is a shame that they don't have co-op, as the original game obviously had two-player co-op. This is single-player only. Next up then we have Naruto Shippuden, the Ultimate Ninja Storm Trilogy. It's not actually the trilogy, this is the fourth game, the one that we were hoping would come to the Switch. And they did a good job on the first trilogy, 1, 2 and 3, and hopefully this is going to be equally good. Now this features all the DLC, including the latest one, which was the Next Generation's DLC pack. It centers around the Great Ninja War, and you'll be experiencing the story of Boruto, featuring his son, and obviously you will have to have understood or watched the series or played the previous games before you jump into this one, as much of the lore will just make no sense to you if you haven't. This time around you'll be able to choose from 124 different ninja, which is the most the series has ever seen, and it's launching at £44.99, so it's got the premium price tag that you might expect, and there are a few pre-order bonuses if you're looking to pick it up. This drops on the 24th. Then we've got Archaica, The Path of Light, which is from Dragaeus Games. These guys have released some great titles on the Switch. Now, as the light bearer, your quest is to walk the legendary path of light and explore an ancient and beautiful world. What I will say from the trailer is that it looks to be a interesting light-based puzzle adventure game where you use the Tesseract, which defects deflects the path of the light. Different dividers, which then separates the lasers into two different beams. Converters, which modifies the colors. All different things that just add to the complexity of the puzzling. But I'm really liking the visual style they've gone for here. And the music is lovely. It's all based around a mysterious civilization, the locales of which are all modeled around different design elements from within them. If you enjoy a logical thinking puzzle, then this might be the one for you. And it's nice that there is a strong narrative running through the whole experience. It's also a decent price, £13.49. I can get on board with that. One to potentially keep your eye out for when it drops on the 24th. 
Last up then is a game that I've put into the list because it reminds me of a Bard's Tale. If you ever played a Bard's Tale back in the day, it looked like a serious action RPG, but then it turned out to be anything but serious, but still a very good ARPG. This one, on the other hand, looks like an old school point and click adventure, but actually listening to some of the dialogue and the voice acting, it sounds very funny. There's over 6,000 lines of fully voiced dialogue, as mentioned, custom music and sound that has a bit of a retro twang to it, and the pixel art graphics that, you know, some of you hate and some of you like, but these games always looked a certain way. Whether you like this style, it takes on a more of a, what was that game? It's called like Goblins or something. Can't remember now, but it looks a bit more like those. But there's also elements of like Space Quest in here as well. It's one that would appeal to me and a few others, and it drops on the 24th at £10. Well, I've still got half a pint left. So that's it for this week. I think when all is said and done, that is a pretty decent lineup of games coming. We've got the Trials of Mana, Streets of Rage, MotoGP 20, which I have to say, in the while well, I've been making this video, they've just sent a code through for. Broken Lines looks really interesting. And that Sunless Sea looks really good. So yeah, let me know down in the comments which of these interest you. Will you be picking any of them up? Or are you going to wait for some Switch Up coverage? A big thanks to all of you who watch the channel, who like it and do the subscribe bits and all that stuff. And for all things Switch all the time. Oh, and thanks to the patrons. Can't forget the patrons to support us in these crazy times. Many thanks. What was I saying? For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!